Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about burning money. Um, about two years ago, me and my uh, business partner had a big fight. At that time, we were counting how much money was left on our bank account. And we have two choices. One is to raise a big amount of money and then burn more to match with our competitors who's in the food delivery industry to uh, have a higher customer subsidy. And another choice that we have is to um, to really go to profit and maybe you know, squeeze our business size. Um, at that time, I was up for burning money because at that time, I just exited from Uber, which Uber plus DD together, they burn about 20 million RMB each hour. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy, crazy industry because the whole e hauling industry, they actually burned about 100 billion RMB in the past like five years and to make, really make that industry establish. And there are a lot of stories like Amazon, like Didi and Uber, like those food delivery companies who burn a lot of billions and billions of dollars who really made it to the capital market and made it to profit, profitability. But that lucky thing didn't happen to me. I thought I would be like this guy, like very cool gangster boss, having limited money to burn and to, to have endless bullets to shoot. But in the end, um, that, at that time, the capital market turned cold suddenly, and we were not able to raise our next round of funds. So that startup didn't actually end up very well. So after that, actually, I, 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 did, I took a deep thought about burning money. Because over the past few years, there are a lot of stories, successful stories about burning money to success. But in fact, Behind every successful story, there might be tens of thousands of failures who burned money to death. So I did a research about what is ahead if you choose to burn. So I analyzed about 200 um, platform economy, uh, platform uh, companies in China. And this red line is about uh, the, the result of this company. Uh, this, uh, this line actually shows the different uh, series of uh, fundings. Uh, uh, a, B, C, D, and E. And the number here shows the intervals between each funding, uh, the interval month. This here, it shows like between series angel and A, it takes about uh, 16 months to do to, to between these two rounds of fundings. And this gray line is a sample of Asia listed companies. We can see that it's more healthy. And it grows older. It actually took about uh, one and a half years to do a new round of funding. And in the end, it's about over two years. But this red line is a little bit worrying because literally the, the, the intervals between each funding is decreasing. And in the end, every six months, you need a new round of funding. So what does that mean? Firstly, here at angel round, you might need just a million US dollar or less than that. But here in the end, you might need a hundred million US dollar to go on. So that's very, very high pressure. And second, to close a round of funding, it takes at least six months. What does that mean? That means as a founder, literally every day of a year, you are raising money. So who's going to take care of the product and customers? Who knows? Maybe that's the story happened after OFO, who went to bankrupt due to very bad customer experience. So that's the thing that's, that's awaiting you if you choose the burning money like sector, uh, this, this path. And it's a long march. Even if the biggest players, we can see that they are still in deep red. And it might take them some time to turn green. And you can imagine how much pressure it is for the founders of this company. So here I have three suggestions. First is do the math. Do not just re build everything purely on dream, but do, do the math. Here is a very simple um, like curve of uh, the, the life cycle of a platform company. Uh, to explain it simply, at the very beginning, the economics and the experience of your platform will be very bad. And then you grow to a tipping point. And after this tipping point, every, everything suddenly turns good. The experience will be good, and your economics will be good. But the problem is, after you turn to this point, will you profit? So do your math there. Calculate your acquisition costs. Cal calculate your customer's LTV. 
calculate your take rate and your gross margin to make sure you will be able to make money at that point and not vice versa. And also here, the condition of the tipping point is important because before that, you are burning money. Um, I have a case last year that um, the car rental business, there, there are some people who want to do car rental uh, compared to the shared bicycles. And I calculated to the VC that I was, uh, was advising, it will take that company 10 billion RMB to burn to that tipping point. So in the end, we turned down that case, that deal. And right now at this moment, all the companies in that sector are already bankrupted. Yeah, so it's very important to know that how much money you will need to go to this point. Yeah, and also throughout your lifestyle, you may need very good cash flow management. It's good to have positive cash flows. And another thing is choose your product. Um, I use China's Wikipedia versus De Dao as an example. Uh, at the very beginning of these two companies, they chose very different products, although they are all knowledge sharing. Wikipedia is using Inclopedia like format, and also is a Chinese counterparty, Zhuhu is using a BBS platform where everybody can come and share. While Zhuhu uh, and while De Dao, when they are established, they use audiobook as the product format. So when both of them began to monetize, you can find that De Dao is quite easy because the product is there. You just need to change from free to pay. But as a BBS, they don't have a ready product to pay. So they need to create a commercialized product. And it's very hard. And they found the conversion rate is low. And everybody just, every customer just came here to share. They don't expect to pay at all. So it caused big trouble. So here I put a Chinese word here. That means what you want in end, you should start with, with the same thing at the beginning. So if in the end you want a commercialized product, please use the same product form at the beginning. It will make your commercialization much, much easier. And the third suggestion is for, I think most of the audience here, we are doing some cross-border things and we come to China, maybe bringing some uh, foreign business models to China. And there's one thing you should pay attention to is the price of your home market. The price of Asia is quite different from that of advanced countries. Here is um, a simple example of Uber and DD. Although their annual trips are similar, their price, their unit price are $20 versus 20 RMB. That's almost exchange rate difference. And what that difference will make is Uber was able to make profit at the beginning of last year, and DD was still making loss, 10 billion loss. So a chain, although they have different volume, the difference in price could totally make the business model totally different. It's zero or one. So when you try to bring some good business model, great business model in your country to China, please pay attention that Asia is a low price continent. And the, the difference in price can make the business model totally different. So do pay attention to that. Not everything in your home country will work here. Yeah, so these three are my suggestions. And a final note, um, if you decide to do something like Elon Musk with the goal to bring human beings to the outer space, to make human beings a multi-planet species, uh, please forget about what I said today. Yeah, because um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a long-term thing, and I, I I believe those who pay for it is is not the customers. Yeah, so that's all about my sharing. I also write blogs on platform business models in China. Welcome to scan it, and welcome to leave me notes. Thank you.